Hello, hello. A little bit late. Are you gonna go over classes? Yeah, I will. Do you want me to hold it while you're doing classes and then you can switch me? Yeah. See if we got anybody on. Yeah. Right. You need to. You got any. Who? Are we on? One person? Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. We're a little bit late. It's been one of those wild and crazy days, but we're still here. We actually made it on a Tuesday, which is kind of something new and different. But anyway, just wanted to remind you that we do have still have a few classes coming up before the end of the year, including Quilting in the Hoop in the morning with Barbara. I think we have a, one spot left there, so if you want it, let us know right away. Um, next week, we have a couple of mastery classes. These are for new owners. Mastery sewing is Monday from the 6th from 2 to 6. So if you've purchased your machine from us, that is a free class. And this is to learn how to use your machine. And then on Wednesday is our beginning embroidery class, our mastery embroidery class from 10 to 2 on the 8th with Barbara. And again, if you purchased your machine from us, it's free to you. If you uh, purchase your machine elsewhere and you'd like to come to the class, it's $50 for both the sewing mastery and the embroidery mastery. And we still have a, one or two openings left on our Mystery Make Overlocker, our Bernina Academy event with Kathy Shalda. So if you're interested in learning what a serger can do, all the different techniques, this is the class for you, and it's a lot of fun. We'll serve you lunch every day. We'll have door prizes, lots of camaraderie, plus a lot of hands-on experience of what you can actually do with a serger. So if you are interested in that, give me a call. We'll get you signed up. And um, I think that's about it. We've got a lot of promotions. If you go to our website, vacauthority.com, then, um, we have our, our catalog with all of our promotions in it from our sewing machine companies and other vendors, plus our own promotions as well. So take a look at that and come see us. We'd love to see you in the store. And now we're gonna go over and, um, am I still on? Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Go over okay. To Barbara. I'm gonna go over to Miss Barbara. We're kind of new to this uh, Facebook Live thing, but bear with us. And Miss Barbara Gordon is right here. Hi everybody, so glad to see y'all this afternoon, and um, I hate we're running a little bit late, but hey, late's better than never, right? That's right, better late than never. So, uh, what I'm going to talk to you about today is using Mylar with your embroidery. And so when you, um, if you're going to, like we're doing the snowman this afternoon, and Linda, if you'll look at these two little snowmen right here, this is what I was working on today. Now, they are so cute. Uh, this snowman was, I put, I took a piece of mylar. Now this piece of mylar is white and it's also just a balloon that you I got from the dollar store. <laughs> so um, you don't have to go buy, you know, $7 a piece sheets to do this with. You can go to the dollar store and buy a balloon that's deep, not flat, inflated and use it for your background. So I've taped it down to my background fabric and I've used a tearaway um, stabilizer in the hoop. And you wanna tape this down so it won't move on you, but you're going to float it. You're not going to put it in the hoop. And you, I, don't, I didn't put the fabric in the hoop either. So um, when we start sewing, if you wanna look here on the screen, here's our little guy. And he's cute as he can be. And so, and so, um, on this one that I did here, this one is done with the white mylar, but I, all I use is thread on it. And there are designs that have been digitized just to use the mylar so the little bling will come through the threads. Yeah, but, I don't know if you all can see that, but that is so cute and very blingy. Yeah. And then the other one I used, um, I used this under the thread on the body but then when I got to the neck and the, um, excuse me, I used um, this for the hat, which is a bright blue. 
And if you want to take a look there at the bright blue. And then the red uh, is a piece of red mylar that I cut off of a balloon. I was going to say, are these from balloons? Yeah, they're all from <laughs> balloons except this one. Crazy. Yeah. Well, whatever works, right? It's mylar. Amen. Now you, but you have to be careful if you um, get mylar that's got, it's a wash away, then don't wet it because it'll be gone. <laughs> that would make sense. Yeah. So, um, so in doing this little guy, we're ready to go. And what the first stitch is going to do is to, um, we're going to put it down and it's going to stitch. Uh, I don't know where you can see it with white on white there, but it's going to go around this machine. It's stitching down the, the basic outline of the snowman. And when you're doing mylar, your stitches have to be lighter than they are when you're doing regular embroidery. Now, one feature one feature that this machine has, and this is the uh, Brother Essence, and it's there's a great deal going on this machine right now. It's got um, luggage with it, uh, which is about $1,000. It also has the BES4 um, software. Mm -hmm. Now, in January, we're going to have a class for people who already have this software. If you're interested in coming, then we, it'll be toward the end of January, but uh, we will be having a class on that software. And it's super easy to use and um, very user-friendly. So uh, I hope, hope everyone who's got this will have, take an opportunity to come to this class and learn a little bit more about the uh, program. Okay, so um, now also, also on this essence, when you've got it on, uh, I'm gonna hit return here. Then when I hit embroidery, it's going to go back to the front. Now, um, one thing that this machine has is a staple stitch uh, that stabilizes what you've got on there. So you can float your design and then you can put a, a box around it, a staple box around it, hit that little button with the rose on it, and it puts a box around the snowman. So like a basting stitch. Right. It. Uh -huh. yeah. It's a basting stitch and it's, um, it's easy to take out so you, you all know what a basting stitch looks like. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. This thing. Now, is this like kind of like applique where you're going to trim that away? or? Well, actually, the mylar will actually pull itself away from it. You oh, cool. cool. And then what's a little bit's left, you can take tweezers and, and move it out. So, I'll need to raise this just a second. I need to move my snowman back down a second. Now see that box is separate from the snowman itself and you go down here and hit select and then it selects the snowman and you can move it down. Now I probably shouldn't be using my fingernail to yeah, do this. <laughs> but at this point I don't know where the stylus is for this machine. So um, we're going to hit embroidery. And so we're ready to go. We're going first thing it's going to do is stitch this box around. Now, when you're doing mylar, if you use a darker color, it will come through the mylar and you'll be able to see the background. So in that case, you need to take a piece of like poly mesh, which is a cutaway, and cut it out to the same size that the um, snowman is. Okay, now that we're ready to continue on with the snowman, so we'll put it back in to go mode. So it's outlining the snowman again. And uh, I outlined it with white because I didn't want anything coming out from under it. If I had put a uh, base under it like the poly mesh, then you'd want to cut it small enough that it would not come out from under the thread stitches when you get through with it. Okay. So now we're ready to go over the snowflakes that are on the program. And this is going to cut the mylar, so all you have to do is pull 
product dry through the stitches perforate the nylon. Uh -huh. So when you, when you get through stitching, then it's going to just pull off. I'm holding this straight, it's not um, steel. Well, it's nice, so it's a little bit wiggly in the ground. Watch these machines work. Um, the Essence is a, a really nice, nice machine. It's on sale for $54.99, I believe. I will all with the uh, bundle that goes with it. We have other machines that are not bundles available with them as well. Uh, if you check our website, you'll be able to see them. And um, we got some great deals on some, on some of these machines. It's just uh, phenomenal. And just to get the luggage for it, somebody came in here today and had to buy the luggage because it didn't come with a machine and make some points on it. And they had to pay the thousand dollars or just about right at a thousand for the luggage and looking up to the machine. So uh, y'all take advantage of these deals while they're going. We also have financing available in the Starting on December 3rd, if it's over, if the sale is over $5,000, it's about 60 months. That's for about a week, week and a half. Oh, okay. On Friday. Oh, okay. And then we also carry other brands. We carry Vanina, Burnett, we carry Janome, Viking. Handy quilters. Oh, yeah, the hand up. We have a long arm. Yeah. Carry, carry the handy quilters. We have quilter. the Vanina long arms as well. Right. Those machines are just phenomenal. I really want one. Okay. But I don't have anywhere to put it. <laughs> Space becomes an issue. So what it's doing, I don't know if you can see it or not, but what it's doing is stitching the body of the snowman. cute on a, um, a shirt or um, apron maybe or uh, maybe a make a Christmas shirt. background and white thread. Now you can't have a snowman without having white. <laughs> well I guess you could have a pink or blue or green or whatever. So it's got the snowman on there. It's got all the little stars around him. So uh, what we're going to add now, the next thing is going to be his nose, which is orange. And Linda, I'm gonna give you back the camera here so I can. Alrighty. So I can do a quick change here. And y'all all know that you always cut your thread at the top and pull from the bottom so that you don't build dust up in your um, in, your, in your machine. So now I'm adding uh, orange for his nose. And I think orange was the only color that I didn't pre-open. Oh. <laughs> of course. It's gotta be one. And I thought it was interesting how Barbara was using the thread stand. If you don't have one of these thread stands, you are missing out. Uh, it is available to use on every single brand that we sell. 
and it's probably one of our best selling items in the store and it just helps to feed especially your embroidery thread better than just putting it on the machine itself now linda one of the best things about this machine and a lot of the brother machines have these self-threading features and so I brought the thread down and I pulled it, I pulled it down to the mm -hmm. foot and then I pulled it over these two levers and I cut it. Now what I'm going to do is reach up here to the top of the machine and keep your eye on that, on that one. I can get my camera in there. Okay. Yeah. So watch what it does here. There you go, it's threaded. Awesome. That is awesome for my eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. So anyway, we're gonna uh, get that ready to go and I'm just gonna walk around for just a minute. We got in some beautiful new fabrics from Michael Miller that we are getting ready to go out. And it, these are to make a really adorable baby quilt. So be on the lookout for that. We'll have that ready in a few days. And we've got an, uh, some other things coming in as well. We got in some beautiful pre-cuts today. Are they over here still? Uh, here they are. Aren't these gorgeous? These are called Fairy Frost and they're kind of Christmassy collections. And that might be something you'd be interested in too. They are quite, quite beautiful as far as I'm concerned. And then we got in some new pre-cuts from Kaufman as well. So we're always getting new things in. So be sure to come check us out. All right, we ready? Nope, nope, not quite, okay. And we do have our Christmas fabrics, 25% off right now. Here is some, here are some of the things we have available. And some flannels, if you wanna make some pajama bottoms or a baby blanket, we have some beautiful flannels here and over here. And some kind of wintry flannels, plaids and such. So come see us, we have some great options and we will give Barbara another minute we are so in on the little snowman the the mylar snowman and we are ready to add the carrot nose Almost. <laughs> just a minute, give me just a second here. Okay. All righty. Uh, the uh, the um, on the needle here, I pulled the thread out accidentally and uh, this is a 70-10 needle. And sometimes whenever you have a really small needle, lower, smaller than an 80-12, uh, sometimes the needle threader doesn't work. And, that and is true. So it's always better to use a 80-12 if or above if possible. And don't forget too that whenever you're um, looking at um, needles, that you use the needle that goes with the thread you're using. Uh, I had a lady come in the other day and was so proud that she had not changed her needle in 30 years. <laughs> and I was appalled. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't see how the needle even went through fabric after she's used it 30 years and hadn't even changed it. But you Me either. But um, you need to make sure that the thread, the thread you're using and the fabric and the needle all match so that you don't have something strange going on. It just makes a, a much nicer um, stitch on whatever it is you're making if you've got the right needle, the right thread on the right fabric. So I uh, need to always keep <laughs> oh, those wow, in mind. Oh, 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm like, well, I think I would think twice about using that, but 30 years ago, she put a needle in it. I'm surprised she hadn't broke it. <laughs> well, you know, until somebody taught me many years ago, there you go. There it went. I thought you kept the needle in your machine until it started snagging your fabric. <laughs> oh, Linda. That was a while back. Yeah, I've a long while back. I've learned a few things back. since then, but. Okay. 
So it's good. All righty. We good to go? Yeah, we're good to go. So we're putting the nose on our little snowman. Okay, now, and looking at our color chart here, it's telling us we're gonna do the broom, but it's uh, like green. So I want to, the broom, I think it's the next thing. So I'm going to this button here and I'm going to open it up. So I'm going to move it down one color and that's gonna do the broom. So we're gonna do the broom straw in the same color that the thread is in. So it's going down and do the broom straw. We'll just take a couple of seconds and take it on and off. Okay, so now we're going to put the scarf on, um, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave that, um, that broom handle on there, but in doing the scarf, I'm going to take all of this tape off here, and I'm going to remove the mylar That's on here. See a little better. So I'm just it just peels off. Now this is going to peel off around the edge of it. Because it's got that basin stitch around it to hold the fabric, to hold the mylar down. Now um what well, now I'm going to add the um, red mylar to it. So I'm just going to take a piece and I'm going to put it over the snowman. And I'm going to tape it down. Now this blue tape, painter's tape is great for doing things like this because it doesn't stick really hard, but it holds it well enough. And the reason you want to tape it down is that you don't want it moving out, around or bunching up. Bunching you, up, and yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah. So we don't want to do that. And you get that at like Home Depot or? Yeah, any, any place that sells home improvement stuff. You can get it, if you can get it, sometimes you can buy it at office supply places. Yeah. And, so there's a even grocery store sell it. So this tainer's tape is fabulous. And you don't want to, you don't want your mylar to bunch, bunch up on you. So we're gonna tape it down here and we're ready to go. Except I gotta change, I'm gonna cut my thread from the top and pull from the bottom again. And I'm going to take the orange off. And since we're doing the red uh, band, then we're going to this on there. I love this thread stand, guys. Of course, this uh, this machine does have a thread stand that sits on the back of it that is uh, not part of the bundle, but you can purchase it and it's uh, really nice. It holds two, uh, two spools of thread for you. Yeah, that back cover comes off and that's where it goes, right? Where that's correct. Where that back cover is. Yeah. Right. thread got kind of bunched up there when I was going around it. <laughs> You're pretty frizzy. That Barbara, that 
what Barbara said was you cut from the top and pull out through the needle. I never knew that until somebody taught me that too. Don't ever pull your thread backwards through the machine. It can gum up the works. So just always cut it back at the, um, at the, thre the spool of thread, cone of thread, and pull it through the needle. And that is the best sewing practice. Oh, absolutely. You know, I didn't, I really didn't believe that that much until I was watching our tech, our sewing tech, open up a machine. And when he did, this whole area in here had dust all over it. And it was from the thread being pulled backwards into, from the machine. I'm like, whoa, and baby, that's too much While we're talking thing. about that, um, yeah, keep your machine clean, the, the, um, thread, especially cotton thread, has a lot of lint and builds up a lot of dust in your bobbin area especially, but also over your needle. So get those Q-tips out and keep, keep things clean. And, uh, if you, and the machines that need to be oiled, such as Bernina, if you'll oil them regularly, then you know, and keep them clean yourself. You won't get into major service issues. That's right. And well, I had a lady come into a class, she had a, you know, $10,000 machine, and he quit on her. Uh -huh. And so I said, well, let's just take a look at it. So I opened up the bobbin case. She hadn't cleaned the bobbin case out since she got the machine. And she had enough lint in there, she could have knitted the sweater. <laughs> so it was no wonder the machine would not work. So the machine right now is um, stitching out the mylar, you can see on the there and tells you what it's going to be doing next. And so it's um, doing the scarf around the snowman. Now it's going to do the band around the hat. We appreciate all of you watching this afternoon, late in the afternoon. I know everybody's kind of tired after the long day. We appreciate you joining us. Oh, absolutely. We're still kind of new at this, so Joshua always did this for us. So. <laughs> if yeah. the camera's doing weird things, bear with us. Yeah, we'll continue to do well, weird we're, things. We're learning. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take this one off. See, the mylar just pulls away from it. And then you can take your tweezers after you get through pulling it off just pull it away see it just tears oh, that's away cool. that's really yeah cool. it just perforates it that's and your... Don, Don said different fabrics accumulate dust that is for sure thank you for that so just get you some tweezers and so does the thread stand <laughs> that could happen too so keep it dusted absolutely Okay, so now we're going to do blue. So I'm going to take a blue piece of mylar, and this is just going to be on the hat. So, okay. I, was, this, I think this is so cool looking. And of course, I love bling anyway, so. <laughs> She's the bling girl, for sure. put a few pieces of tape so it won't move around on us. Okay, so this is gonna be the hat, the blue hat. Yeah. 
using my red thread and the blue uh, mylar coming through it. Now, if you want to make mylar and you don't have a digitized pattern, what you can do is lower the density on your machine to 20% uh, and it will give you the spacing you need to put the mylar behind the stitching. Okay, so we're going to tear this off. Look at our blue and red hats. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't change the fabric. Oh, that looks good. Now, the thing is... Can you see it? The thing is, is that right through here is all red. Well, I'll get that when I take it off, but uh, there'll be a red band under that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is the uh, black, and that really makes a big difference. That's what makes it pop, right? Yeah. So I cut from the top and pulling from the bottom, except the bottom disappeared. So sometimes you don't have a choice but to pull from the top. But it's not something we want to do on a regular basis for sure. But sometimes the thread is cut short and you don't have any choice. And it's really super easy to thread these things. So there it goes again. Um, being a size 70 needle. Yep. <laughs> Let's try it again here. I guess the moral of the story is don't embroider with a 70 needle. <laughs> More or less, yes. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> well, the thing is, kind of one of those uh, catch-22 things where yeah. you really need to stitch with a smaller needle or something like this. Okay. But um, it, do it does get aggravating if the needle doesn't thread itself, and it didn't on that one, so. So you can see where that black outline is going to go, and that will finish it off. Yes, there's the orange Very, very cute. Now, this coming Saturday, uh, we have an embroidery club, or the 8th, of, not this Saturday, but the 8th. We have embroidery club, and um, this is what we're going to do in the embroidery club. Oh, fun, fun. Yeah. But I thought that some people might be interested in this. Yeah, the, our embroidery club has been really successful. We have one here at Westport Road. We also have one at Clarksville. Um, I think one's on the second Saturday and one's on the third Saturday. And they have made some great projects. Um, at, we've done applique, the freestanding lace. Um, what are some of the other things, Barbara? Um, we've done... Um, or just a very, uh, we've done a reading pillow, we've done um, little bags of different kinds. Um, she did just, a class where she taught you how to transfer your designs from your computer to your machine, which is something that many of us need some help with too. So it's, it's going to be a good, pro new, good project every month. And you, it's hands on, you bring your machine so you can learn on your own machine. And um, so we really encourage you to join our embroidery club. You know, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. I think we still got maybe a couple of other things. Yeah, one or two. Two. Okay. And we've made place mats for tables using. Uh, oh yeah, those are dark. Yeah, it's really cute. So, um, and I like to uh, do things that the people who are coming to the club are interested in as well. This is one of the things I had requested was to show them how to do it in my heart. Yeah, so tell us what you want to learn, whether it's in embroidery or any other project, because we are going to be working on our uh, new class schedule for, the, for 2022, and we would really like to know what you're interested in and what kind of classes you would like to see at the Sewing and Vacuum Authority. Like I said, we will have a computer. 
program for them being being exploited. And if enough people have the on our little finished ones and give Barbara a minute to, to get that threaded and then we'll finish up and we thank you for so much for joining us today. You do bring your own machine to the embroidery class, to the embroidery club. Yes, ma'am. Yes, and Aileen. The, and to the mastery. And to the mastery class too. If you come to, as I was telling you earlier, we have um, an embroidery mastery on December the 8th here at Westport Road from 10 to 2. And that's for anybody who needs help learning how to use their embroidery machine. The embroidery club is more learning techniques, but the embroidery club is actually learning how to hoop and how to do, how to, how to use that embroidery machine that you have. So, um, we would love to have you join us for both. And then on the um, and we, as I said, we will start up a new series of classes after Christmas. Barbara's gonna leave us for a couple of weeks, going down to visit family down in Alabama. So, um, uh, she, when she comes back, we'll get started in earnest. And let's see, I have a suggestion from Dawn again. Use a seventy-five eleven needle. That would that give us a little bit bigger eye, right? Well, it still won't necessarily work with the machine, but um, I would have used a 7511 if I'd have had one. If you'd have one. <laughs> but I didn't want to get it too big because of the... Um, hey, my friend Linda. Good to see you. Okay, we good? Yeah, I got to go back. Go. Two stitches though. Well, I just had to make a couple I'm cut the extra around you and come bright. over here and we can see a little better. I was just moving, removing some thread where the thread broke. That's why I said that lady who had all those, had that needle in her machine for 30 years, I don't see how she didn't <laughs> break one. I break one about every time I use things. <laughs> Truly, guys, y'all shouldn't be um, 
doing as I do, you should do as I say, and that is don't use your scissors to cut your thread while the machine is going. You need to stop it. And cut it. That's how you get a needle to sew through your finger, right? That's right. <laughs> exactly. In a class a few weeks ago, we had somebody actually do that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm glad they were both nurses that were <laughs> sitting right next to each other because it was like, oh my gosh. All right. Are we Wait, done? No, we just got to put a little mouth on. And then we knew we did do the green handle, so we're going to go back and do the green handle. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is to, um, I should tell me it's through sewing now. Let's see. It did. It did. However, we didn't do the broom, so let's go through the threads. So she's backing up through the colors. Oh, there he was. There's our little broom handle. Okay. The reason I did that, the reason I skipped through it, is because um, I didn't want to change the thread. And you can do that sometimes. You just have to look at what the word to make sure that what, if you skip colors that you don't uh, embed it under something that needs to be on top of it. See, so just colors in the broom handle. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna take this out now. Lift up our little bar and pull it out. Now, is that cute or what? It's adorable. Okay, so now I'm going to take the mylar away from it. So, this mylar is just perforated by the stitching. Well, that makes it easy. Yeah, it just tears away from it. Then you just have to pull out that basting stitch. Yeah, just pull the basting stitch out. And I'm not going to take the time to take the basting stitch out. No, 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 no. I'm just going to pull the mylar away from it. Well, that is cool. And so it perforates itself. And I'm going to just pull it away. And any extra or excess or any extra that's left there, see, so it's just pulls away really nice and easy. Then you can get some tweezers and pull it away and it's just great. So those of us who, those of you who joined us later, Barbara was telling us that she gets most of her Mylar by going and buy a mile, buying a Mylar balloon at what, Walmart or Target or? No, from the dollar store. They're from only the a dollar, dollar there. store, that's even better. <laughs> They're only a dollar there. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Okay, I was gonna show them what this, um, what it looked like under this. Should have brought some tweezers with me today, but I didn't. I probably have some. You're gonna lift that up and that'll be red underneath? It will be bright red. There we go. Well, I kinda like it with the, the red. The red stitching on the blue. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of different. Let me turn this yeah. around so I get to it. Yeah. So there's your red band around it. Of course, you didn't need. need to rotate it in my phone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Still don't know what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. He is mighty, mighty cute. He just needs to be cleaned up a little tiny bit. Right, and right. There you go. So that is how you make a Mylar snowman. Join us on uh, December the 10th? 8th, 8th. 8th. For our embroidery club class. And also, will you do the same one at Clarksville? Yes. Okay. So one of those two, if you're interested in doing the Mylar Snowman. We'd love to have you. We thank you for joining us today. So everybody have a good night and thanks for coming with coming to visit us today. And thanks for joining my little Mylar Snowman demo. And thank you, Barbara, for your demonstration. That was so interesting and so fun. Come see us at the store. Y'all have a great evening and Merry Christmas.